I think there's something important in this time about celebration and about gratitude. And in fact, that's what I want to talk to you about is gratitude, because it's something that the Bible talks about so often, about our heart for gratitude. And we're going to look into this right now, but I've perhaps got a little bit of a trivial story, but it's around gratefulness. As you know, in lockdown, there was a time that we couldn't find toilet rolls in our supermarkets. And there was a perhaps there's a time that you can't find things that you need because of lockdown. Well, I've got the privilege at the minute of going shopping with Heather and it's something we go out and we get dressed up once a week and we go out to the supermarket to get our shopping and on this one occasion just after Easter, um, Heather gave me a little list of my you know items to get and on that list was obviously some eggs. I had to get six eggs and uh, that was part of my job was to go and search for them. But on the way to the egg shelf, I found another egg shelf. In fact, this is what I found. I found these incredible chocolate yummy eggs. In fact, my favorite ones. And uh, normally I would just walk by because they're so expensive. But because of lockdown, something happened. They couldn't sell them all. And so this was after Easter and they were selling, they were almost giving them away. Can you believe it? And so what I did is I couldn't help it, but I put one in my trolley and then I put another one. And then I thought, hey, this is a good day. So I filled my trolley with chocolate eggs. In fact, in each one of these, there's 22 small eggs. So I ended up with over a hundred odd eggs to take home. And then I met Heather at the checkout. And she said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I'm getting the chocolate eggs. You said to get eggs, I've got eggs. And in fact, I bought one for you, my darling. In fact, I bought one for Solomon as well, our son. So talk about that generous spirit. I got one for both of them and a few more for me. And that was a great day. In fact, I was so grateful for lockdown at that point because it meant I could enjoy chocolate. I know that's a trivial story, but it's something about being grateful for the situation that we're in. There is always something positive, and I'm, I'm going to talk about that right now. When we look into the Bible, we're going to look at how Jesus himself talks about the power of gratitude, whether it's for chocolate eggs or whether it's for far more profound things, like we've heard of Michael's story of that healing. I mean, there, there are things in our life from the small, and this is the point, from the small to the great that we need to find a heart of gratitude. And Jesus talks about it in Luke 17, verse 11 to 19. And this is a story of the lepers. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, this is Jesus, he traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And remember, Samaria is a place that the Jews didn't really, they didn't like going. The disciples didn't like, let's not get close to that place. You know, it's a place that's a, a bit of a, you know, a bit of a dive. It's a place that you don't really want to go to. And here he is, Jesus on purpose. He's, he's traveling close on the border. Jesus always gets close to the border of what you shouldn't do. And as he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. Ten men, they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them and the state that they were and the flesh that had fallen from their bodies, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. So not before, but as they went in faith, they were cleansed. They were healed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. And he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, weren't ten of you healed? Surely weren't ten of you made whole and cleansed? Where are the other nine, Jesus says. Notice this question. He's saying, where's the other nine? One of you have come back. Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner, the Samaritan, which says to me, the others were Jews, they were like fellow people, but the Samaritan was like the untouchable one. And he's the one who's called the foreigner who returns to give thanks. Then he said to him, rise and go, for your faith has been made well. This story is in the Bible for a reason. And it's, it really shows that Jesus had a big issue with gratitude. 
he you you can just see within his life it's it was important to him even as parents today what is one of the first things we want to teach our children is to say those two words thank you thank you is something we want to instill in our children that they grow up and 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 they realize that there's something about gratitude it's such a powerful word and even jesus there is this story of him that he's pointing out 10 were healed only one came back and he's pointing out to this issue that even when God can do an amazing miracle we can very quickly move on in our lives to what's next and miss the great blessing see it was the same blessing for all 10 but only one came back gratitude is a chosen attitude that's what it is we choose to have that attitude it's not something that you just presume it's something that you decide I'm gonna have a chosen attitude attitude of gratitude and that is something that Jesus was saying this is important in the kingdom of God this is important for humanity is gratitude even right now through the challenges that we've had I believe that there is a greater gratitude in one sense I've, I've seen people are more grateful because the freedom they once had has been removed the fact they could move around freely but now they can't suddenly they're grateful for the fact they can perhaps go and walk in a field or go and visit the uh, seaside or something like that. They can like go and do things and meet family and they can hug someone. Whereas right now that's been removed or reduced and because of it we suddenly have a greater gratitude because the crisis has caused us to reflect and say I'm missing that and it's something I took for granted. And God is stirring gratitude in our hearts right now. The ability to be grateful is one of the greatest gifts that you can possess. And yet it costs us nothing to use. That's, that, that is, it's phenomenal. You don't have to do a study on gratitude. You don't have to work hard on the discipline. It's a chosen attitude of saying, I'm going to have a perspective of being grateful and I'm going to choose it. And it is, when I meet people, in, you know, on my journey, who have this gratitude within their life, I'm thinking, you've got something very precious. There is something powerful about someone that displays gratitude. It really is. And we can possess it, and yet not all of us have it. Not all of us make it a priority, and God wants to speak to us about this. So there's a few things I'm going to share with you. The first point is gratitude is not circumstantial. It's not to do with, oh, well, when things are good, we're going to be grateful. If we think that, that's so shallow. And in fact, we will even forget about giving thanks for the good things because we always some, want something more and we can almost become dissatisfied with the good things we have and we only want something better. So that one thing we had was done for now, but now I want an upgrade. And life is full of these upgrades. Well, I was happy, but now I'm not happy. But gratitude, you see, it comes and combats that. It's, it's not circumstantial. It's not, as we heard in that amazing testimony of Michael and Tatiana, there was something around the crisis and the accident and the shock and the robbery of, of health and the future and what it looked like. And yet they chose to have gratitude in the middle of the crisis it wasn't because everything was wonderful it was because this they were saying we're going to choose gratitude if we're only grateful when we get what we want we would say that that really is like being spoiled children and yet God wants us to be a people that can find gratitude even when things are difficult I have noticed in the world as we've traveled around that some of the poorest people I've met that hardly some people don't even have shoes on their feet as some of the happiest and most grateful people I've met <laughs> then some people who have 50 pairs of shoes are some of the poorest people on earth because they haven't discovered gratitude I've seen sick people more grateful than healthy people and it just shows that there is something that says gratitude is not about your circumstance. Waiting for things to get better and then I'll be happy, then I'll celebrate, then I'll give thanks. No, it's a chosen attitude. Some of the richest people 
are the poorest people and some of the poorest people are the richest people I know. And there is a truth here, a great gift that each of us can have. Even in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 to 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Oh, not, not in some, not when it feels good, not when things are going right. It says, in all circumstances, give thanks. Why? For it is God's will for you. So his, his will for you is to have an attitude of gratitude. And that's why Jesus was saying, there was like this rebuke saying, well, where's the other nine? Because a miracle was done, a life transforming miracle. And yet they didn't have time to come and give thanks. And here it says in all things, not for all things. He's not saying give thanks for all things. I mean, that would be a bit weird. This terrible thing has happened. So we're just going to give thanks. No, he listened to what it says. It said give thanks in all circumstances, in the situation. Find something to be thankful for. Even when there's robbery or there's fear or there's anxiety, find something within the circumstance. So it's in it, not for it. And that's something that, you need a practice and discipline because your thoughts will always go to the panic and it will go to what you don't have or to what's going to happen. And, and yet there's something in this and no, I need to give thanks. It's the will of God. I need to give thanks. Thank you for my life. Thank you. I'm breathing. Thank you. Things are not over. Thank you that your plans for me are for good. And there's this focus of switching it and changing the game. It's like a defiance. A heart of defiance that says, I believe everything is either God sent or God used. And that, that's a strong statement. Even when I don't understand it, even when it's difficulty, God, use it. God, I'm going to come now and give thanks in this situation because it lifts me from the situation. Number two, gratitude has a voice. So gratitude is not silent. See, Jesus could have very easily, and we've got people like this, it's like, well, I'm grateful in my heart. Well, you know, I'm grateful, but you, you don't need to hear me say. And there's even this old school thinking of, well, I don't want to go around saying to people, hey, I'm really grateful for those words you shared with me. I'm really grateful for that gift. I'm really grateful just for you being you. We, we sort of sometimes we struggle with that. And the old school way of thinking is, well, if I, if I go around saying thank you and showing gratitude, they're going to get a bit big headed. They're going to get a bit full of themselves. They're going to get puffed up. And I've seen this in the Christian world where sometimes we withhold our gratitude and thanks towards people because we think, oh, they might get a bit proud. And yet in the scripture, there is something about rejoicing, giving thanks, lifting others up, um, edifying one another, doing everything you can to encourage. And here it is, it's saying, come and give thanks because gratitude has a voice. Only one leper responds. Jesus isn't there saying, oh, it doesn't matter about the other nine. They were probably thankful in their hearts. No, he says, gratitude should be demonstrated. It should be a word out. And your gratitude and my gratitude, you should be able to see it. It should display it. It has a voice. It says, I am thankful. I am thankful for this. I want to give thanks for this gratitude. I'm going to take this, this stand. And the way I do it is through a confession and a display of action. And that's what this one leper was doing. Because we are beings that are designed for worship. And there is power in the confession of our soul. And when we do that, there is health that comes into our life. That's why it's always great when you do encourage and you give thanks. There's something powerful about it because it does you good when you give out. Expressing gratitude grows humility as is linked to giving honor. If you think about it, when we give attitude and that gratitude and when we show that it is really a, a form of humility and it's about saying I value I give honor and God says there is blessing around honor number three gratitude ends where my entitlement begins this is a huge one in fact I want to say it again gratitude ends where my entitlement begins 
Think about the one leper who came back. Who was he? The foreigner. That one foreigner who was the untouchable, the one that people didn't like. He wasn't just a leper. He was also the one that was like the lowest of the gang. And he's the one that comes back. And I think it's fascinating. The, the others, maybe the others, they were Jewish. They were perhaps they came from some sorts of backgrounds, but there was something about entitlement to them of the miracle. They were healed by Jesus, but they felt entitled. And so they didn't return with gratitude. But the one who could not believe it because he didn't have entitlement, he was shocked that Jesus, a Jew, would come in and declare healing over his life. He's overwhelmed. And it just shows again that entitlement, what happens is it comes in, it robs gratitude. Entitlement is in fact a thief of contentment. As soon as we start saying things like, well, I think I deserve that. And I think my rights, you know, it's my rights and my, those rights of mine. And we, we say these things not just perhaps in a governmental way, but we also say them in local church. Well, that's, I just think those are my rights. And I can't believe that my pastor hasn't, like, you know, let me know that information. And I feel these are my, and we get, we get hurt around some things because I don't think that was good communication and my expectation. And if we don't handle those things in a healthy way, we get hurt. And then what do we do? We use, we use our tongue to react because it's coming from the hurt within our hearts because our expectations weren't, weren't met. And when they're failed, see, we end up then feeling like I haven't got the attention that I deserve. What about my rights? And there are these things that creep in around family. You know, there are families that are broken apart because these things come in place because entitlement is a thief of contentment. And whenever you have disharmony and you have fracture and you have hurt and anger, you will find that entitlement is busy making its bed at home with you. We have to watch out for it. Entitlement is a robber and a thief. When I feel entitled to my wealth, I am a grumpy giver. When I realize that God has given me everything that I have, all that I'm clothed with, everything that I have today, there is something about that gratitude causes me to have an open hand to give. It is amazing when I feel entitled to an apology, I become stuck in unforgiveness. And the fact is, some of us who may even deserve an apology will never get an apology. But forgiveness releases you and it comes through being grateful in all things. So that would say to me that pride is the root of entitlement because pride says, hey, I think I have rights and this is all right for me and I'm not willing to let go. But Romans 12 verse 3 says, be careful that you don't think more highly of yourself than you should. Because that's a danger. But in fact, think of others more than yourself. Therefore, entitlement is linked to presumption. We just presume things will always be that way. And in our countries around the world right now, things have changed and we have become more grateful in many ways, even in the UK now, eight o'clock on a Thursday evening, we go out and we celebrate the National Health Service. So in our little village, eight, eight o'clock for the last weeks, we go out to the end of our drive and we see the other villagers and people have a pot and a pan and they're banging or clapping our National Health Service to celebrate them and give thanks. That has never happened before. But now, because of the situation we're in, there is this gratitude. See, entitlement has shifted, and now there's gratitude and honor. And this is something of God. This is something that God is moving in and doing within our lives. And as Christians, we should be set in this example. So the last one, number four. Gratitude enlarges your life. I love this. Gratitude will grow your life. It will make your life bigger. You will live a bigger life through gratitude. Gratitude will keep you going when others give up. Gratitude will get you to see the silver lining of the cloud. 
Gratitude will cause you to come out of your day feeling, hey, there's, there's some, we're, we're breaking through here. There's something that is overcoming through gratitude, this attitude that we choose to have. In fact, I've got a, a family member who is not a believer. And this person has struggled with some mental health um, issues and just been through a lot of stress and difficulty and challenge in her life. And from it, uh, she's been seeing a counsellor and this is a non-Christian counsellor. But do you know what? One of the main things that she came to and said, this is what you can go away and do. This is what you can go and commit to because... Every, you know, everything is like caving in. Everything is like negative. And there's, there's this anxiety and stress. And she hasn't got God to look to. And so it's like, I'm just overwhelmed. And, I'm, and there, everything is quite negative. And this counselor said, she said, what you need to do is go away and develop gratitude. Practice gratitude in your life. And it's funny because I had a conversation with her and she said, oh, yeah, I've got this new thing and it's called gratitude. And I've been told that I've got to make a list of things and I've got to like look at these things and I've got to focus on gratitude. It's like amazing. Yeah, it's in the Bible. This is the message that we have as believers. This is why we come together even every Sunday and we celebrate and give thanks to who God is. It's who we were made to be. But this has changed that person's um, attitude has changed her mood and she, someone's getting paid to give that advice. This advice is free and it's from the Bible that this gratitude needs to be our attitude. I, as I finish up, I want to even refer to more than just gratitude. I want to add another word because sometimes gratitude can almost seem the polite thing to do. Oh, I've gone back and said thank you for my healing. It's far greater than that. I hope you're getting this. It's actually called the dominion of gratitude. I want you to understand that there is a dominion. A dominion is a place you go. A dominion is authority and it's a place you stand. It's not wishy-washy. It's a, it's a place of authority. Dominion is to take charge. It is this place to go and stand. And the dominion of gratitude is a chosen place. You can go and stand in the middle of trials, in the middle of difficult days, in the middle of bad news, in the middle of ill health, in the middle of needs, you can take this stand of the dominion of gratitude. Why? Because it will enlarge your life. This dominion of gratitude, it takes you from mono to color within your life. People are drawn to, to grateful people. They're drawn to, pe they, they are. And when you're around negative people, you're repulsed or drained. But when you're around grateful people, there's something that builds you up. And we have the responsibility to do that. Heather and I, through the many challenges and difficulties in our life, I think we discovered something powerful. That was when we had those bad days where we were right down in the valley and it was, I don't know how we're going to come through this, discouragement, just one bit of bad news on the top of the other. We chose and we understood that we had to choose this dominion of gratitude. I can remain overwhelmed or I can step into the dominion of gratitude. And the last thing you do is feel like saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're in control. Thank you. You're going to use this. Thank you. It's not over. I feel like it's over, but I want to thank you that it's not over. And when we confess that and when we shout it and we scream it, and I'm talking even right now in your life, sometimes you need to get in a field and you need to shout to God with thanks, you know, rejoice to him. You need to celebrate with your hands up because the enemy wants to put them down. He wants to quiet in your mouth. He wants to silence you. But God's the one that wants to raise a shout. And he says, raise a shout. And there is this powerful dominion of gratitude. Every time we moan or complain, we shrink our world. But gratitude enlarges our world. And that's why we need to count it a joy when we encounter various trials. Why? Because through defiance and dominion, we come in and we see amazing faith take place. Your happiness is linked to your gratitude. If you look at your life and think, when are those points that I was happy or unhappy, it will be linked directly 
to your attitude of gratitude. And so as I finish now, <laughs> these are the four questions that I want to leave with you that you can think about from this message. Number one is, where have I allowed circumstances to silence my, my gratitude? Let me say that again. Where have I allowed circumstances to silence my gratitude? Number two, where do I need to employ a voice of gratitude? Number three, where have I allowed entitlement to rob my gratitude? That's a big one. Number four, how will I commit to enlarge my life in times of hardship? Guys, those are the four questions I want to leave with you within this message. Because if we can grab hold and understand that there is a place we can go in the dominion of gratitude, it will set you up. It will mean that you can carry on when you want to give up. Really, in the, in, in the middle of that hardship, in the middle of the storm, gratitude takes on this armor. And it's like, you know, I'm just going to give thanks. And it's amazing how it lifts your spirit. You see beyond and you go forward. And I, I'm still amazed that the greatest thing ever is the fact that God believed in me and that he believes in you. Even when we didn't know him, and maybe right now you don't even know him or you're away from him or you've turned your back on him, he still loves you. Even on our worst day, he loves us and that he sent his only son and he gave his son as a sacrifice for the world, for you personally, even on your worst day. He gave his son and my heart is just forever grateful for that one thing. And as believers, so often we can forget the greatest miracle of all that Jesus was sent to give his life for you. That we didn't deserve it, but he gave his life up completely, that he was made a fool. He was tortured for us. So that if we chose him as our savior, we would come to know God the Father. For that one opportunity, he gave his life. And that's why I want to live my life in gratitude. That's why I want to always look to him and say, God, you're good. You're good. You're forever good and you're forever faithful. And it even says in scripture that he not only comes and he saves us, but it says also that he comes after us with his blessings. And it says that goodness and mercy will hunt us down. And so even right now, if you're in a time of struggle or challenge and you don't know what the future holds, do you know what God's word says? That surely goodness and mercy will come after you and hunt you down. Why? Because God gave his most precious gift, his son, for you so that you would know life, that you would know God the Father, that he loves you so much. And that is something that for every one of us, that we can say I'm forgiven and the gratitude that we have in our life. Failure doesn't define me. My past doesn't define me. I've been bought for, for a price. I'm redeemed because of him and because he believes in you. When Jesus came and died on that cross, that is the greatest thing I can ever think that someone could do for me. That even when I was a sinner and I rejected him and I didn't know him, he died for me and he died for you. And I want to say to you now, whether you're a believer, whether you walked away from Jesus and you turned your back on him, even if you denied him, maybe you've never put your faith in him, Jesus still died for you. And do you know why? Because God loves you. And God loves us even before we chose him. He loved us. He believed in us. And that's why this heart of gratitude within every one of us should be, God, you believe in me. You chose me. And that's beyond my greatest failure. It's beyond my worst decision, my greatest mess, the greatest brokenness. He chose you. He chose to get involved with your life. He chose to send Jesus to be involved in your life. And he came and he offered himself as a sacrifice. And through him, there is forgiveness of all sin. And guys, what, every day we should come to the cross and say, thank you for the cross. Thank you, because it was the cross that brought us back to God. It was the means that we could come to know him as our savior. Not only that, but he loves us. And it even says that surely goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. That <sighs> he's just pouring out his blessing over every one of us. And so for each of you now, as we finish up, maybe you need to take a next step 
Maybe you need to come home and return to God your Father. Maybe you need to come and say, sorry, Lord, I walked away, but I'm home. He's ready and waiting. Maybe you need to put your faith in Jesus for the first time. Then I want to encourage you to do that right now. Get in touch with us. You know, we'd love to pray for you. Maybe there's someone you know. We, we would love to celebrate that with you and help you take that next step. And then church, let's be a people in this time of choosing to take a dominion of gratitude that we stand in that place and we say we're going to be defiant within it and we're going to choose to give thanks in all things because he loves us and he is Lord of all. Church, God bless you. See you soon. I am incredibly grateful to be able to spend this extra time with my family and my newborn son, as well as being able to celebrate health and God's provision in this time. I'm grateful for the job that God provided for me, and it's meant that I'm able to still earn money during this lockdown. I am grateful for my car because it gives me very practical freedom. I'm grateful for technology because of the big part it has played in this season. Hi church, I'm grateful for church, church online and watch preach every Sunday. We are so grateful that Father is a covenant keeping God. He will never leave nor forsake us and we've never lacked. Even through this economic uncertainty of today, Father has provided for us and provided work. And we are so grateful for His provision. I'm so grateful to my church and the Word of God. I'm alive today. I'm healthy and with a roof over my head. What more do I need? I'm even grateful for challenges because through those challenges, I get to learn new things. I'm grateful for this moment of pause, which has allowed me to focus on my true core values, um, which are my family and my faith. So for that, I'm very thankful. I'm grateful for Facebook because it's helping to connect with my community. I'm grateful for constant provision through this lockdown. I'm grateful for stability and the opportunity to reflect on my own life during this corona time. I am grateful for all the benefits and healthcare practitioners for how tirelessly they have worked to save lives. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching.